coming out to go red snapper fish. But we're getting into some kingfish now. So we're gonna take advantage of that. We'll get our red snappers eventually. We are gonna get them. Headed offshore out of the lovely inlet. We got some live bait, we got some dive gear, we got some dead bait. It's another offshore bottom fishing day with Captain Ryan McKay. We're gonna get him. He's gonna get him. Ryan has had it a goal of his for years to catch a kingfish. Just kidding, but we're gonna have fun. Flat lines. Pull him, Ryan. Ryan's got himself a red snapper coming on up. He's fishing that Maxell Oceanic 30 wide. Super powerful reel. This looks like a mediocre size. Mediocre. We'll take him though. Starting off the day with him. There's a reason we keep these smaller red snapper, and that's because we have a limit of 75 pounds of a gutted weight of red snapper for the day. That's how many we're allowed to keep. So if we are getting all big fish in the 15 to 20 pound range, it makes it really hard to hit that 75 pound mark. You'll be with 70 pounds, and then what are you going to do? you got to catch some small fish. So we get the small fish in the beginning, and it gives us a better way to kind of gauge how many fish we need for the rest of the day. Once we have about seven or eight or ten pounds and smaller fish then we're gonna start going for some bigger ones just had a fish on the flat line over here nice little kingy in there in the slush ryan's got the second one hooked up of the day how's he feel ryan feels nice feel everything you imagined it would be it's been wanting a kingfish for years it's gonna be a bonita probably will be a bonita looks a little long for a bonita Long and stinky. Looks like we got us another king coming in. Kingfish in the butt. Ryan, beautiful belly hooked kingfish. on again this time he's using that spinner that salt x and it's a bigger fish definitely a bigger fish we just got a giant one too on the electric i wasn't filming it but red snapper had a big blue runner Ooh. that's on that carbon shield too blue series rod blue water series not marking yet Sometimes on that bottom machine, you can see the fish. It's like the Ryan show today, but I'm gonna take it over because we're gonna go dive soon. There's something I really want to do with diving. Pumping them, pumping them. You're good, you're good. Is that hard work? Got my buddy over there. Hold one up, Jordan. Hold one up. There you go. Jordan's getting them over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There's a nice one. Oh, it's got, I think I got the LP. There you go. Jordan's got one. We got one right here. You got that? 
Nice one, and I got tangled on my El Pizzle. It's all right, we're gonna cut this right here. That was on the kingfish rod too. All right, another day out here, another day diving. Our buddy just left. We got a lot more room, so I'm gonna go ahead, hop in the water. As always, shout out Gilly Gear. These bags are sick for fishing, for diving, for all sorts of outdoor activities. But I'm gonna get all my dive gear together. Got my gun in the back, put one of them in the back. I'm gonna put this camera right up here. And I'm gonna go cool off in the water and switch over to the mass camera and go shoot some fish. If you've been watching my channel, you know the spear fishing is my absolutely favorite thing to do. So I just hopped in the water. We could have caught these fish rod and reel, no problem. But I love spear fishing, and this is the very last day of commercial red snapper season for the year. So I got my Koa 130 wide body with a slip tip in case I see something really big, and it's got some power to it, or a lot of power to it. And all my other gear from Florida Free Divers, fins, wetsuit gloves, all that stuff. Nice and ready for a day of diving. Now I'm going to explain to you what's going on here because I'm diving by myself, um, being as careful as possible. I'm trying to stay very close to the boat. We're in about 150 foot of water or so, and it's murky. This doesn't look super dirty on the screen until you realize this is normally pretty blue water. Those fish are no more than 20 feet away from me or 15 feet away from me, and they're very hazy. It was a green hazy creepy look to the water that day and just an interesting feeling down there so i'm drifting down with the chum taking my time trying to get really close to the fish line up a good shot and then we're gonna pull the trigger there we go hit them good and this is why i like the slip tip i can put a ton of pressure on the fish and that slip tip is a lot stronger than a regular flopper shaft. So let's slow it down for you, show you one more time. You guys seem to really like these slowed down, zoomed in clips. That's dirty water. I mean, that thing is only eight or so feet away from me and it is that murky. But I hit him good, I pulled him hard and got him back up to the boat. Oh, we found him. Can't do that. red snapper Ooh, still got my fins on nice red snapper the water is not very clear today it's just straighten out the there you go nice one hit him in the cheek came out the bottom jaw that's gonna be a fun one to get off a couple more we need Time to get back in the water and get another one. And I wanna explain something that you might not know or you might not have thought of. So the boat's anchored. The boat's anchored using a trolling motor. Uh, but when I'm diving down, I'm at mercy of the current. The current is blowing me backwards just like it is all the chum. So if I go down for say a minute or a minute and 20 or 30 seconds and come up, I have a nice swim back to the boat and fighting a fish that can be a, that can be a problem and it also makes it really hard if you don't shoot a fish to make another drop you got to swim all the way back to the boat catch your breath so it's definitely to my advantage to shoot the fish on my first drop like right now I really didn't like the shot they gave me though so I turned around and started making my way up you can see all the head movement going on there and as I started swimming up I think something about that made the fish want to swim up and check out that chum one more time and when they did I turned around right here, lined up a shot, and let it fly. I hit that fish good, and that fish was strong. I was pulling as hard as I could, and the fish was just so strong, it made it hard to get back to the surface. So as I'm kicking, I'm burning up more and more oxygen, and it's making that like that want to take a breath even greater. So once I got back to the surface, after a pretty long dive for me, I was able to slowly pull the fish in and land it. As I got the fish closer, I could see it was a really solid mid-body shot and the spear came out towards the bottom on the other side. I brought the fish into me and while I had a really solid shot, it definitely didn't kill him. So I grabbed my knife, 
and use that to kill the fish. This makes it safer for me, kills the fish faster, which is more humane since it's going to die anyways, and makes it a safer swim back to the boat because I do have a little bit of a swim back now. This one's really funny because I'm going to watch Ryan catch a fish. If you look really closely, and especially if you have it in 1080 or 4K, there's fishing line coming down from the top right corner of your screen. Ryan's now drifting chunks down with the rest of the chum, and it's funny because the snapper know. They know something's up with that chunk because they eat all the other chum first, and they're all going back and forth, back and forth, and then right here, you're going to see them kind of come all around that chum in the center and eat it. He ate it, he ate it, he ate it. Woo, Ryan's on! This is pretty cool because Ryan has a fish hooked. His fish is pulling drag, it's going crazy, it's flashing around down there, you can see it on your screen, and I'm going to take advantage of that. While his fish is going crazy, it's action, and action brings action. So this is the most red snapper I've seen all day. They all came up, I think, to check out his fish, saw the chum, and just went crazy on the chum. They wiped that chum out in just a couple seconds. And as I was drifting down, I was lining up a shot, and the fish ate the chum really fast, so I didn't take the shot. Something happened, the GoPro freaked out, glitched out, but I had a shot at one other one a little bit deeper, and I was able to get the shot off on him. I made my way back to the surface, pulled the fish in, and we're now going to head back to the boat to see how our red snapper went for the day. Oh, Ryan's got him too. Ryan, you bat on him? That's going to wrap us up for the day. Watch your feet. Oh, yeah. Well, that is going to wrap up a little commercial red snapper session. We got some nice little pile of them. These are all some studs. Woo! Nice pile of red snappers. Finish up a commercial day. That's a nice one right there. Look at the size of that tail. She's a beauty, a couple kings. Ryan got that nice king right there. We're gonna get these all gutted up and get them in the cooler. Well, I thought we were done diving, but decided to make a little pit stop on the way in. One of my spots, I like to dive for some mangrove snappers. And as soon as I got in the water, this bull shark was so curious. It would not leave me alone. There was actually a couple of them around, but one in particular kept coming really close to me and I just didn't feel comfortable making a dive down with that big old fish right on me. So I would start making a drop down and this is what would happen. It went on for a couple dives. Anytime I would go just stick my head under the water, it would come in. So I, no way I'd be able to drop down 10, 20, 30, 40 feet. I just, it wouldn't be smart. I wouldn't be comfortable. But after a couple times in the water, the shark kind of lost interest in me and moved out. Now he's not gone. I know they're never gone. There's always sharks around. And you'll actually see him in the background, but there was just so many fish around I wanted to check it out as carefully as I could. There's that big shark right there in the background. But there's so many big amberjacks and big mangrove snapper, but there's no way I'm going to risk it. I'm definitely not going to shoot an amberjack because unless you roll them, it's going to be a disaster with that shark around. Uh, but if I can get a good shot on a mangrove snapper, I can do that and pull them into me really fast. Even if I don't stone them, it's still not that big of a deal. I can manage that. So I'm aimed at the chum, waiting for the shot and we got us the El Rolo. It would not be a video without the El Rolo shot. Big old mangrove, doesn't really do justice right there to tell how big it was, but that was a nice fish, probably getting close to the 10 pound mark. Made a pit stop on the way in. Solid mangrove. Hit him with the El Rolo shot, and then Ryan, Hooked himself something. 
Those AJs that we saw, one of them ate Ryan's live bait right under the boat. It was cool. I saw him eat it and everything. The bait was down probably 20 or 30 feet, and then they chased it all the way back up. On my jig and reel, which I've actually been liking for bait fishing. I don't like it. Was that a shark? It's a bad angle all the way on the other side of the boat, too. I don't see a shark, do you? Thought we had a shark on him, but just a feisty jack. There he is down there. Better size than I thought. Oh, look at the other one with him. He's got a follower. Would we foul hook him too? Oh. Look at those big boils. How you doing, Ryan? I don't know why I did this. <laughs> you know I don't like that. Alright, we're gonna try to get a hand up. And with a well-timed boat rock. Well-timed boat rock, I'm on a platform. Hold this. There we go. Umber rock. Ryan is the man with the amberjack plant. Hold them up. Hold up Ryan's AJ. Yeah. Too tired. There to we hold. go, another AJ for us for the day. Well, actually that's our first AJ today. Ryan doesn't want to hold him. Let's see how long he is. Oh, it's not our first one actually. We got one before. I think it wasn't me in the face. Yeah. Well, we know there's a lot of ages around, so I got back in the water and I'm just drifting around looking for those big mangroves. And I actually saw a nice Kubera a little bit before this, and that's what I'm really looking for. Now, I'm not seeing them, but I'm just being patient, drifting around, looking at these mangroves, getting vortexed by amberjacks, and I missed. I took a long shot on a mangrove and just completely whiffed. Shooting through the amberjacks, long shot, just a couple different things made it a hard shot to make. And I just switched out. I got back in the boat, I grabbed the other gun so I didn't have to reload. And lined up a far shot with my big gun, which has a lot more power to it. And you'll see how that worked out right coming up now. That gun just has a lot more power. I pull the fish into me, start making my way back up to the boat, and I'm only 15, 10, 10, 15 feet under the surface of the water, so it's not a far swim up. I'm really close to the boat. Especially with those sharks being around, I didn't want to go too too far from the boat. I grabbed the fish, threw him in the boat, and was going to swap out and grab the other gun for one more drop. One more shot. I'm going to take the other gun and try to shoot one more mediocre one like that quickly load the gun. We also have storms closing in on us. We do have a radar, so we're able to kind of try to run from the storms or run around the storms, but I want to do one more shot. We had the fish chummed up really good. I had a feeling it wouldn't be hard at all to shoot one of these mangroves, so I just barely dipped my head under again. I'm about 15 feet below the surface, just enough to kind of get away from the waves and level out. And I lined up with my smaller gun, which is less powerful, but super accurate. This is the gun I'm very comfortable with. The mangrove is doing the typical snapper thing, back and forth, back and forth, but I got a good shot on him. Now I can pull him up. Not looking so pretty on the ride home. Like we're gonna have to 
punch through it, and then we'll show you all our fish.